Hey guys, what is going on? Sharp Thinking here. So, I have a little bit of a different video for you guys today. Uh, this is going to be a fixed blade video on the Bradford Guardian 3. Uh, this one happens to be in Venetus 4 Extra. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that's similar to Crucible's 4V. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, but yeah, I have been very pleasantly surprised by this knife. Um, I have actually had it for about three weeks and I've carried it. Um, if not on my person, then it's been in my bag uh, every single day since I got it. And it is a really well thought out uh, EDC fixed blade. Uh, I have decided that I'm going to secure a Bradford Guardian 3.5 for content uh, on this channel. Um, so, I don't know if I'm going to wait to do that uh, because they only make them in M390 and N690. Uh, not my favorite steels, but I'd love to get one in 3V or Venetus 4 Extra. Uh, but I guess we'll start with a size comparison before I get into anything else. Here it is against a Chris Reeve Sabenza and an Umnumzon. Here it is against a Strider SNG and a Hinderer XM18 Vintage. Here it is against a Microtech SOCOM Elite and a Microtech LUDT. Spyderco Military and a Spyderco PM2. Let's see if we can get these lined up. Uh, didn't really do a good job on that one. And then we'll do two more. Here it is <laughs> against the Microtech Stitch and the North Arm Skaha. So, um, cutting edge is looking pretty good in comparison to most of those knives. Uh, overall length, I'm sure you guys noticed, was a great deal less. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious as to how that's possible. Uh, of course, this doesn't need to fold goes in this little handy belt sheath, and we'll get to this in a second. But, um, yeah, very compact knife. Um, definitely not obtrusive. I've carried it uh, on the belt and in the waistband. Uh, honestly, I don't love carrying it horizontally. It retains fairly well, um, but it's not that great. I actually, uh, in showing Nero knives how the knife retained dropped this knife tip first onto a tile floor. Um, so it's not great, but the retention certainly is not bad. Um, let's start with ergos though, uh, before I talk about the sheath and whatnot. Um, so when the knife came to me, it had on these micarta scales uh, for the past three weeks approximately. I've been carrying them with the G10 scales. Um, both are comfortable. They have the same profile, uh, at least the ones I got. Uh, I know that they have a flat G10, um, kind of like a, a coarse textured scale. Uh, I would be open to trying that one out. Uh, just this version I got didn't have it. Um, let's see, what else do we have going on with the handle? Um, something I wanted to touch on. Oh yeah, the palm swell. Okay. So one thing I noticed right off the bat was this palm swell. And um, in a fixed blade, it's pretty common to have them, uh, especially in larger fixed blades. Um, in this knife, it's geared towards a choke back grip. Uh, so the swell falls perfectly. It reaches its thickest point right about here. So right before it hits this uh, last screw, that's where it's at its thickest. So when you're gripping the knife like this, it is most comfortable. Um, well, the palm swell is most in line with where it should be. However, I have never once cut with this knife 
not choked up. Um, I, I've heard of a couple of concerns uh, people have voiced uh, in other videos about their finger coming close to the edge, and that's not been my experience. Um, so basically getting back to the palm swell, it's good. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, in a choked up grip, it does kind of pinch you a little bit uh, in here. If you're really bearing down on the knife, and I mean really, really bearing down on it, in normal EDC cutting, you're not going to notice it. Um, oh yeah, so uh, to address the problems people have been voicing about their fingers uh, getting close to the choil, uh, in some cutting tasks, yes. Uh, it could potentially be a problem. In much of the cardboard cutting I've done, um, it's not been a problem. And that is because when you grip the knife, and I'm going to go upside down on you guys real quick. Um, when you're cutting with it, the blade gets pulled back like this. So it naturally, at least in my experience with cardboard, uh, pressure starts to come onto your like the web between your thumb and your pointer. And it kind of creates a little space uh, between that uh, point right here and uh, your pointer finger. Uh, that's been my experience. Sorry about that, guys. My phone just died. Uh, so I think I was talking about the ergonomics. Um, in general, the ergonomics are very, very good on this knife. Uh, in my own use, and I think for what people are primarily going to be using these for, uh, I would not complain about the ergonomics. Of course, they could always be better. Um, however, ergonomics change. Well, people's ergonomic preferences change from person to person. Uh, so really, it is a super tricky thing to nail. Um, so I'm going to say it's about as good as it can get for this knife. Uh, would I have liked to see the palm swell maybe more central uh, in between these screws? Yeah, is it a big deal that it's back here? I wouldn't say so. It's not painful. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I think I'm being overly picky. Moving on to the blade. Uh, we have a nice Venatus 4 Extra blade on this guy. It's got three inches of cutting length and it's three and a half inches overall. Uh, a nice size for EDC, at least in my opinion. One of the first things that I noticed about this when I took it out of the box was the stone wash. It is a very clean and even stone wash. Uh, it had kind of a bluish tint to it uh, in natural light. I don't know if, no, it doesn't look like it's showing up. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a very nice finish. Uh, the water jet or laser that they used to cut this with kind of left a pretty, I would say coarse or rough finish. Uh, I don't know. Is it a big deal? No, but also this knife is almost 200 bucks and it's a fixed blade. Uh, I don't know. I hate to nitpick it for that, but it's a lot of money for a fixed blade, especially one this big. I don't know. I just don't think that there should be, you know, like water jet marks in the steel hopefully it's water jet um but yeah moving on this version is a full flat ground uh version of the knife i think they have a saber grind uh which of course has a little flat spot right here and a swedge i believe uh i like this version a lot i think although it might not look as cool as the version with the swedge i don't think you're really missing out on anything it has very good tip strength. Um, the shape itself is identical to most of the others. I think they might make a sheep's foot and a tanto version of this. Uh, this is my preferred blade shape, hands down. Um, in terms of grind, I guess we'll talk about this. It's a nice grind. It's a lot like a PM2. Uh, it's a semi-distal taper. It's not like a full extreme distal taper like on this military. I just wish it were ground thinner. And I hate to have to keep 
saying it over and over and over again, but there is nobody in this world right now that can convince me that Venetus 4 Extra at 61 to 63 cannot be ground to 15 thousandths behind the edge. This is probably around 20 right now. Even 5 thousandths, guys. I would love to see that. I, I Like, leave the rest of the knife alone, grind it thinner, and I'm fucking down for it, you know? But, um, it's not bad. It's not like it's, you know, like a ZT-0300 from the, you know, whenever they came out. Um, it definitely cuts. It cuts well. Uh, it's just... How I envision this knife being used is as kind of like a more, um, like camp style, like maybe a little bit of food prep, uh, whittling. It's like an outdoor knife. So if we could get it a little bit thinner behind the edge, at least I would be happy. I don't know if you guys would be, uh, let me know in the comments, but I would love to see that. Uh, I don't know. It, it's a recurring theme in a lot of my videos. Um, yeah, the jimping. Uh, not bad jimping. It's kind of, uh, it doesn't need to be there. I'll say that. Uh, it's not ineffective. It's also not painful. I'm not really going to complain about it too much. I'm not a big jimping guy. Um, but yeah, it is there. I don't mind it. I think it's fine. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, the sheath. Of course. Okay. Leather sheath. Um, it's made well, uh, fairly well, at least. You can see this one is kind of beat up a little bit. Um, it's not bad. It's, it's really not bad. Um, and if I didn't have a 30 inch waist, it would be probably a little bit more carryable for me. Uh, I have a very small waist, so what ends up happening is if I put it on my right side, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It just literally, it, in the sheath like this, my belt run through here, this part sticks out. Uh, and it just looks bizarre, but even worse than that <laughs> is when I put it on my left side, because now this is just sticking out in the middle of my torso, right by my zipper. And I have to say, I tried it out, luckily not in public, um, but it looks very bizarre. It angles out just like that, and I have a belt buckle, um, so it kind of pushes it out a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I may end up getting a Kydex sheath for this. I think I might hold off until I get a Guardian 3.5 to make the executive decision. But a Kydex sheath for this knife I think would be really great. Uh, how I've been carrying it with this sheath is I just slip it in my waistband uh, as if it's like a gun or something. Um, similar to that style of carry, just in the waistband. And that has worked great. No, I don't carry it like that on hikes. Uh, I think that would cause some issues, but um, yeah, it's not a bad sheath. I'm sure it works for some people, just not for me. Um, it does get leather all over the knife, and I don't know. It seems to be a continuous supply of leather particles on the blade. Kind of annoying, but not a big deal. So yeah, I mean, here's the deal. It's a great knife. It's made in America. I love anything made here. It's... Also, almost 200 bucks for a knife this small. I mean, there's the military closed next to it. Um, it's not finished incredibly well. Uh, is that my main priority? No. Uh, it doesn't cut insanely well. I don't know. It's... um. I don't know. I, I, I can't indefinitely recommend uh, this version of the knife. Uh, what I can do is recommend 
the N690 version of the knife. Um, the N690 version of the knife is 100, I think 100, like 100 bucks even, or maybe $101. I think that for 100 bucks, like this is at least in my opinion, kind of a no-brainer. It's just, and I don't know, maybe I'm knife spoiled or whatever, a, a knife snob, I don't know. But a uh, hundred bucks is not, it, do, it just doesn't sound like that much. Uh, for the knives that I review, typically they're going to be between 300 and 500. Um, that's kind of the audience I've built up. And when I think about a hundred bucks versus 200, sure, 200's, I, I, 100 is still a lot. Like, I'm not trying to s dismiss it as chump change. It's definitely not. Uh, however, I think more people are going to jump on a $100 version of this knife than on a almost $200 version. That's just how I see it. Uh, I don't think people are going to really... I don't think they're going to go for it uh, most times. Uh, I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me know. I'd love to get like uh, some other version of, versions of this knife, uh, possibly like a 3V. I'd love to even pick up an N690, honestly, and maybe I'll sell this one. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. It's definitely fixed blades in general already aren't for everybody. Uh, I think this one is out of all the fixed blade options you could go with the most um appealing to people because it can be edc'd uh and really it's not that far off from knives that people carry i'm trying to find like a quick example so like if you carry an xm18 this is not that far off like if somebody saw you with this in your hand there's almost no difference like this even looks bigger in hand uh so i i don't know it's just I like the knife. I don't know if it's worth 200 bucks, but uh, definitely the N690 version. I'd jump all over that for 100 bucks. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm starting to ramble, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.